dancing, yeah. you know, your voice adding oh, to yeah. mine, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so, so it, 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 it's quite broad. Indeed. Um, but, you know, um, I began to do a bit of research to find out, you know, if we don't know history, we may not really be able to appreciate what we have and, and where we're going. Mm. So, um, so I did, you know, because I didn't come out with two one in school or distinction, okay. so I have to check my notes. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's and fine. I'm not a professional like you that can recite. So basically, um, I, I tried to check uh, US because everything in Nigeria is US, 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 US. So I tried to find out how many American presidents do we have that was involved in agriculture or had a strong background and identified with um, agriculture or agribusiness yeah. as we like to call it so i found out that um, out of the 45 presidents that america has had um, 16 of them were some retired re left their agribusiness to become president of the united mm. states how many 16 16 so okay. out of 45 we've had 16 presidents so you kind of wonder how the agriculture has scaled across the globe mm -hmm. but when you have 16 presidents that are that was heavily involved in agriculture people like abraham lincoln mm -hmm. people like uh, bill clinton bill clinton actually grew up on a farm oh, nice. involved in uh, local irrigation mm -hmm. uh, not even the sophisticated one local irrigation of watermelons picking beans mm -hmm. corn cattle and what really interests me was that uh, bill clinton was doing this um uh this what do you call it um head booting with rams oh so i was shocked i thought why, it was a you, nigerian thing yeah it was just a cultural you know thing that they they did you know in his biography that he lost some some fights okay you know so <laughs> I, I, it was really exciting for me uh, to find J uh, Jefferson, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter actually became a millionaire growing granules. Wow. You know, so we, we've seen the uh, the bush, mm -hmm. you know, especially the junior, was heavily involved in, in ranching. So when you check the history of America, the real ones that made global impact, you know, you... you Many of them did well, mm -hmm. but a few of them made that global impact that Africa can identify with a couple of those presidents. Okay. You know, so many of them were into agriculture. So I, I took it back home. Mm. You know, I'm a local boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it back home. Let's check the history of Nigeria. Okay. Since independence, how many presidents do we have that have been involved in agriculture? And the findings. Two. No, two. You'll be amazed. Wait, but, wait, wait, okay, wait, wait. I want to take a while. Okay, yes. two. Which are the two? Uh, the first president mm -hmm. during the Democratic era, the mm -hmm. Shagma Basanjo, mm -hmm. and President Muhammad Buhari. Okay, so if we date back to independence, before independence, or okay, yeah, during independence. So we have Shagari was a teacher. No, no, no. I'm not saying he was a farmer, but during let okay let's. For fast forward to mm. after Abacha. So after Abacha, we have President Olusegun mm. Obasanjo, who we all identify to the so. agriculture in Nigeria. Yeah. And thereafter, we have um, well. So this president was not involved in agriculture, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. But the only thing we really remember his administration for is agriculture through Dr. Akiomi Adeshino. Yeah. And after that, we have yours truly. President Mamadou Buhari, who is a farmer also. Yeah. So when you check that, we have one, two, three, four, but four of them actively involved um, in the few years. Mm, that uh, they spent. In, yeah, in the 50-something years. Mm -hmm. So there's still hope for Nigeria okay. um, that we're, we're on the right track. You know, when, when we check the vis-a-vis um, what we have mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. So, you know, having looked at that, uh, because today is really looking back at people who have, who have made impact mm -hmm. and people who are still um, making impact so uh, many of many a times when we co compare Nigeria with the US what that means is that in 64 years we we've had consistent agri two tigers but when we when we come back home 
you know, locally, let me first talk about myself. Okay. Locally. Okay. Um, they are, they are, in everybody's life, you have, let me call what I call, maybe lack of appropriate word, uncelebrated heroes. Um, and um, location, that's where Lagos State eventually did the Rise for Job okay. uh, project. And I was one of the biggest projects, and they didn't give me accommodation. The project manager then didn't give me accommodation. Okay. And so they gave me a store. I was constructed about two weeks, and I was running some project there, and I was pretty young then. Shed, yes, yes. where you have cement and coal, and he's running this. No, we should care for him. Mm -hmm. And he said, go and give him an apartment. And they gave me an apartment, two-bedroom flat with six burner gas cooker with ac with you will be shocked at the facilities wow. there wow. and ever since that time you know a I, I got that confidence and things turned around for yeah. me the mindset that exactly the way the man spoke was the to reinforcement me, yeah so he just said he's running a big project we need to encourage him hmm. the future lives with the young guys like this wow. And that got into me. What's it, his name again? Alaji Adesoya. Wow. Me one, Dr. Akiomi Adesino. Okay. By just being different and having a global perspective, is political ambassador. Oh, okay. In the agri space, we can't talk about our agriculture without, without mentioning him. him. Yeah. And really, if you know the history well, you can't even talk about Adesino, Dr. Adesino. Uh, okay, yeah, you would call him. Mr. President, because he's President of African Development Bank. You can't talk about him without President Ambassador, yeah. because he was one of the people influential and um, instrumental to him coming to Nigeria from the US uh, to start this fertilizer project and mm -hmm. co. So, you know, if he wasn't instrumental to Dr. Adeshina, uh, then we wouldn't have what we have now when everybody is now looking at agriculture as being like they call it now sexy you know and every and appealing you know so he, he spoke i like his english he spoke that english to the private sector with his bow tie and his brilliant white teeth and you know the private sector today is embracing agriculture uh, and so another one to celebrate is father i don't know how to pronounce his name <laughs> is nigerian who we didn't give land to uh -oh. and went to Benin Republic and the whole world. So he does organic and now agritourism. People come from all over. A lot of our presidents are friends to him. Mm. A chunk of our governors are friends to him. And you have the Songhai model replicated it, in Nigeria. Is it still based in, yeah. in oh, Benin Republic? Based in Benin Republic. You should come back home. No, no, no. You wish him bad. Really? Yeah, the man will come back home. Yeah. He's doing the nation is connected to his who are the presidents the governors there you know are around here so we've tried to model some guy farms mm -hmm. uh, but we didn't get his heart two years ago i was having a conversation with him and i said this can't be done anywhere there's no big deal and the man said yes there's no big deal yeah so i told him in five years i'll do it so minus two i have three years you know so but he's impacted the whole world uh when i went there two years ago um you found people from France, from Spain, doing documentary. I'm like, this is a Nigerian. You know, these are people we need to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And he's, he has influenced a whole country, you know, by just... That is not ours. Yeah, but he came here, oh. left the U.S., came here. We, we didn't pay attention to him, so he moved to our neighboring country. Oh. And now we go and learn from him, you know. That's so, not fair. Well... Fine. We need to beg him <laughs> to come back and give him everything he wants. You know, so in, going into history also, uh, you know the car Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. Do you know the founder of Lamborghini he was, a farmer. was designing hard tractors. He was designing and manufacturing tractors. Oh. He dropped tractor to go and design luxury oh. cars. Oh, wow. So um, the history I watched was he went to Ferrari to tell Ferrari that Hey, your car is making some noise, and he said, "You tractor boy, you don't understand." So, out of competition, hmm. you know, which you, as a listener today, can instead of fight your competition, really create a healthy competition, you know, and give your competition competition. Mm -hmm. So he decided to go into luxury cars because they didn't listen to him. They called him a tractor boy, wow. and so today we have Lamborghini, one of the most luxurious 
vehicles on the world. So he designed tractors and manufactured tra tractors and he became a multi-millionaire mm. doing that. Mm. Um, we have Colonel Sanders, um, popularly known for the KFC chicken, mm -hmm. you know. So these people have... have he have, was a farmer? No, he, he was in the value chain. You know, I talk about value chain. What, did value he, what exactly yeah, did he do? Yeah, he began to um, add value to chicken to what we have as kfc oh, today yeah, yeah. you know so even the value addition mm -hmm. in, in agribusiness mm -hmm. we have my favorite when i was in iowa in 2014 i actually went to you know find the history about this man and uh, george washington carver uh he used to be a slave studied mm -hmm. did well as a parent um did well and invented over 300 recipes from granuts from one granite, he invented over 300 recipes. And you know, so I, I went for an Igbo um, traditional wedding mm -hmm. or introduction. And for the first time again, wisdom came into my heart or understanding flooded my soul. Mm -hmm. And I saw that, okay, every traditional wedding you go, the Igbo culture gives garden egg and granite. No granot, granot paste. paste. Yes. Do you know that granot paste is what we call peanut butter? It's so sweet, by the way. Yeah, so, it's so the butter. Americans call it peanut butter. I haven't did a research about it about three weeks ago, and the research was it's now a four billion dollar market, and it is the same thing the Igbos eat even almost every Sunday meeting. You know, so. It just turned on me for the mm. first time that, hey, the mm. Igbos should be packaging this. Yeah. Just, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just hitting me now as well. So, so yeah. <laughs> How is it that I can't buy it in the store? Yeah. Why do I have to go to a wedding or some meeting? To get it. And you eat mm. it a lot and children love it on spread. We're not just yeah. packaging it. Oh, so wow. the Northern community produces granules. The Igbo community uses the granite for cultural purposes. So, can we find a listener today who would say, this is what I got from the program, and I'm going to make a difference by pe putting peanut butter on all the shelves. And by the way, in Gombe, in case, you know, because this program is meant to inform you mm -hmm. and give you the relevant uh, data that you need. So, in Gombe, granite is still lying fallow. Then most of the northern region, so you can buy this granite. You've been doing it without preservation and anything, and everybody's eating it. Mm. They even sell it in traffic. Yes, they do with yeah. garden eggs. Yeah. So please, you don't even have to be Igbo also or Yoruba. You just have to be a Nigerian now. Catch this idea. Wow. Run with it. My children eat it. Why? But why? Why do you think that is? Why do you think? Why do you take us? Why? It's just a brilliant idea that somebody is supposed to catch. But it's been there for a long time. For long, yeah. Are we not agricultural sensitive enough? Um, I, I think we we sleep a lot. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So it, it struck me on Saturday and I'm like, hmm. oh my goodness. We talk about value addition. What's more value addition apart from this? And we and the thing stays for days, you know, so we, we have that. Uh, we have uh, agbatod, and you know the spice it with a little bit of pepper. pepper. It's usually kind of hot. Yeah, the spice it's so good. So it will sell across the world. Mm. So, so we need to begin to look into this. We have Bishop David Oyedepo, who created the first agri university in the country, mm. and I celebrate this man, the current CBN governor, okay. um, MFL. Well, yeah. Yes, is the first CBN governor you will find rolling up, removing the suit, rolling up the sleeves in tie. Are walking through rice farms, cassava mm. farms, going into the field himself. You don't find a CBN gun up. They are too big to do that. But because he wants to make things work, he's always in going into one farm or the other. And it's not paparazzi. Mm -mm. You know, people package where they photograph yeah, a steak. Yeah. You know. But this is the guy who just wants to make sure he's working. Legacy. So I celebrate him. Uh, and one of also um the people i love Mamadou. president mamadou why okay <laughs> yeah for for him to be able to say we'll shut the borders mm. we'll make nigeria grow again you know 
when I became the chairman of Agriculture and Agro Allied and Lagos Chamber of Commerce, I gave my team for two years, um, ending 2021. I said, we will buy local, we will eat local, and we will wear local. And that was before they shut the border. Are we going to drive local as well? I hope so, soonest. Yeah, because the Nigerian, um, what's this, Emerson? What's Innocent. It? Innocent, yeah, it's doing that. So the sh shutting of the border um, has triggered a lot of rice production. Mm. A lot of people are looking inward. Mm. And so that decision, um, if sustained, not the shutting, shutting of the border, mm -hmm. but putting the infrastructure after the border uh, closure now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know would revolutionize yeah. the agri sector and and we can do quite a lot of, of good uh, from that and and also um talking about my little self okay. no my humble self i'm not little you're I'm great, big, I'm a you're big great. Boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know um i was humbled um to find one lady who said to me in a program uh, a baby food to be precise please patronize her um she said she had me speak some years ago in in a program um for one hour and she had uh an employment offer from um from one of the big banks one of the big four and after hearing me for one hour she turned it down so i didn't know that she was just uh, she had turned it down years back i said no 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 I hope you've not written them that you're turning it down. She said, oh, that was some years ago. I said, oh, okay, so you can do the job. She now said, no, I started five years ago. And when she mentioned that brand, I was like, oh, my goodness. So you heard me and you are doing this yeah. that I'm always excited to talk about. Biodun also came to a free program um, about seven years back. Um, we gave him information to 1,500 acres of corn. You know, so... I'm asking you today, you're not listening by chance. Mm. What are you going to do to make a difference? To make a lot of money in agriculture or agribusiness, you have to have a long-term perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we pay for this radio program and it's going to be 50 weeks on the 23rd of March. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't sell anything, at least for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't sell anything. We give information. Yeah. This is how I'm making a difference going through what i've gone through going through hurdles going through challenges not finding men there are few mentors you know who been around for so long and so haven't made quite a lot of mistakes lost a lot of money made a lot of money i'm saying i'm doing my sharing with you today yeah. what are you gonna do the world is waiting for you you know so pick something up wow. please pick up the granite i'm so inspired by yeah this. you know I, I personally feel the the um, the Igbo community should be inspired to say, hey, this is ours. This is ours. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to grow the granite. Pick this thing up, brand it, and send it out so they can buy it on shelves in Tesco, in Walmart, for Igbo Target. weddings, yeah. you know. Or even and, here. And, and here. So this is huge. We've not touched, you know, a lot we of haven't things. We have scratched the surface. Yeah, we've yes. not scratched it. We've not scratched it. Wow. I think we should go to the thin line. Yes, I think so. I, it's not just a question of what will you do. If mm. you're already adding value to ag any agri business as well, or you're doing anything as regards agriculture, you can also call in to tell us what you're doing currently, you know, to boost the agricultural sector. If you're in fishing or, or you know, planting or, you processing. know, processing or poultry business, whatever it is that you're doing, do call in to share. If you also have questions, on all of this, you can call in as well. Join us on the phone lines 0809-191-3913, You can also call 0809-234-5913 to join the conversation. And on Twitter, it's Lagos Talks 913. That's Lagos Talks 913. Okay. There's so much more yeah. I want to, I want um, to ask you. About. Know, like... What about the women? Yeah, well... Ah, uh, when this conversation is not done, gender okay. balance, please. <laughs> Lagos talks. We have to hear. You didn't research on women. The women are great farmers, no, you know. They take care of the homes and, they the, and the men. My grandmother was a farmer. To ensure that you know these things come out, and, and, and my research will be among the younger ones. We have mm. quite a lot of younger women now, under thirty. Well, 
35 below who are doing phenomenal works in agribusiness. So mm -hmm. the next champions are coming from women. Mm -hmm. You need to see the value add that women are bringing on board. Okay. Lagos Talks. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Dolby. Okay, join the conversation. Yeah, I want to say, I, well, I call to good support to the agriculture industry. Mm -hmm. You yeah, call? I have a the farm, where the poultry farm, mm -hmm. and I just... Hello? Oh. So ask your friend... I just want to explain. Okay. You know, please ask your friend what is he doing differently apart from what others are doing in the poultry. Mm. Because you can't command um, good value in terms of for your effort if you're not doing something differently. Right. So I learned something when I went for a Cochrane, Cochrane program in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, where the U.S. government brings us in from different countries to learn how to uh, the American way of running agriculture. Uh, and I learned something about free cage and cage free so free cages of cage free and free range so free ranges they move around peck things lay eggs they call it organic mm -hmm. free cage is you allow them uh to go out and, and come in so all those things are things that they use in branding and very expensive poultry Okay. Oh, we're losing the call. We're losing the call. So sorry. But do not be deterred. You can keep trying. We still have a few minutes to go. 0809-191-3913. 0809-222-0913. Or 0809-234-5913. So, there, so the beautiful thing about uh, adding value, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be part of the processing chain or the farming chain in person. But there are also different ways that you can use your existing skill to add value into the agri world. Yeah, we, we have. Hello? Lagos Talks. Yes, hello. Good evening. Oh, good evening. <laughs> yeah, it's Titi. I'm calling from Maryland. All right, join the conversation. Yeah, I am African Sam. I'm so excited at what you're saying about um, peanut butter. Thank you. The first time I tasted peanut butter was in 2016. And I remember telling my husband, this is your story like a package and said it's peanut butter mm. so since then i've just been thinking how how can this be reproduced why do we have to buy peanut butter at this price when we have granules in nigeria so what i think you're speaking to me and i really want to take up this challenge i am not a farmer i am not an agri person you don't have to this, you have this, us this is something this is something I really want to do. Really. I want to take it up. Fantastic. Right. Okay. How yeah. do we reach you? So you can reach us through 0809-7000-222. Or on all our social media handles at AgricBusinessNG. There's a C. A-G-R-I-C. AgricBusinessNG. Uh, and so you can reach us. But exactly. You don't have to go to farm. In mm -hmm. fact, don't go to farm. We have gone to the farm. We have built networks spanning over two decades. We need more the farming experience. And, you know, because when you've not been to the farm mm -hmm. and coal, you so I want to encourage zero eight zero nine seven thousand two two two. Let's take the conversation uh, forward. All right. Thank you so much, African farmer. We do not have enough time we to go not. on, but we'll be back next week, Monday, God willing. And I hope you've been inspired by this conversation to be on the lookout for that opportunity. There's so many of them lying down Too around us. Many. Nigeria is really big and mm. we all have our indigenous foods and different things that are, you know, exclusive to our tribe or culture. You can make tons of money out of that. If you're just hook up with the right people, at least African farmer. For more information on how to turn your dream into a reality thank you so much sir yes yeah, so i appreciate you for same coming time back. next week exactly from 5 30, 30 p.m every monday to 6 p.m so stay tuned because coming up next is the wise men of comedy on it's okay with okay acapella is already around the corner so don't touch that radio guys stay with us